Hello, hello again, friends and little Wolfpack members. Chaos Wolf here, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous 2.3 Beta Server. And this is Beta 2.01. Yes, we finally have multi crew. But today is not about the multi crew. And I feel like I have to apologize a little bit for a bit of a break I've had from YouTube because I've been playing Zelda Breath of the Wild on my new Nintendo Switch. So, yeah, sorry for that. I've uh, been completely absorbed with that, but I beat the game, beat Garden. Now I can come back after also setting up my man cave. So we're good to go with more videos from Elite. And what are we going to be doing? We are going to be modifying this ship up. Now, I've seen a lot of people saying that they want to have this ship set up as a science vessel of sorts. They want to have it being their new science exploration vessel. So what we're going to go and do is we are going to go and modify this up for exploration jump range. So let's go and see just how well this will actually perform in this given role. As you can see, as we have it set up as standard right now, we have a 26.75 light year jump range. The reason we have a different laden jump range is because we're currently outfitted to have a few cargo racks. So if we go and have a look here, you can see that I've got a 16 ton cargo rack here and where's the other one? Actually, is that the only one? Yeah, it is. It is the only cargo rack we've got in here at the moment. But as you can see, we've got a luxury cabin here because why not? We might as well. Although you can really go and drop this off if you want because let's have a look. Because as you can see, if we did actually go and sell the luxury cabin, our jump range would go up to 29.47 light years. So that's really good. But what I'm thinking is if we want to do some long range passenger missions and if they do require a luxury cabin, I mean, we can go and swap these out for any other type of cabin based on what our needs are, what you feel comfortable carrying. Because luxury cabin only has a capacity of four. That might be a little bit lacking for some missions. You could go and swap that out for a first class, a business or even a economy class cabin. Whichever one you're happy to use. But the thing is, it does weigh a lot. As you can see, it weighs 20 tons. Because if you do sell it, you're going to be reducing down a lot of mass and you're going to be increasing your drum range quite substantially by about three light years, give or take. We also have a 4A fuel scoop, because that's the largest we can actually go and take. Because this one here, as we can potentially go and see, we can only fit cargo racks, hull reinforcements, module reinforcements, or passenger cabins. So that's a limited slot. So the 4A is the biggest we can get. What I would put here is a auto field maintenance unit because if you do even start using the Neutron Highway, you're really going to need it. It's going to increase the price of the build quite substantially, but it is really, really nice to have. If you do go and run low on module integrity, you're going to be screwed. You're going to be really boned. We've also got a 3D shield generator, which is the smallest of the shield generators that we can go and fit. I would love to go and fit a 2D. I mean, we can go and have a look, see if we can actually fit one. So where are we? Shield generators. Can we fit a 2D? No, we can't because it would not actually go and cover our whole mass. So that's fine. We've also got a planetary vehicle hanger. We don't need this. This is, again, another luxury thing. We could go and sell this, and that's going to increase our jump range by about, by about three quarters of a light year. We've also got the detailed surface scanner and advanced discovery scanners. Again, we don't really need these, but if you're going out long range, you might as well to double up or double down on your earnings. Well, looking at the core internals, you can see that we've got the standard lightweight alloys, a 2A power plant, because this is currently the build we have right now. This is more than sufficient to run the ship. We could even go and upgrade this for overcharged if we needed. In fact, we could even drop this down to a... Uh, potentially a 2D power plant and go and upgrade it for overcharged if we needed, but I don't know how well that would, well that would work. Because let's go see browse shop, let's go and see 2D. That would take us down to 7.2. Yeah, I don't think we'd have enough power, enough juice coming out of it if we upgraded it. Potentially, but I don't think so. But also go and increase the mass if we went and did that, so we'd be losing jump range there. So I think a 2A is the best to go for. We've also got 5D thrusters because I don't think we can... Oh, we can. We can actually go and take lower. We can go and downgrade to 4D thrusters. So let's go and do that. So that's increased our jump range from 26.75 to 27.25. So that's great. That's increased our jump range by half a light year. 
We've also got the 5D life support, a 1D power distributor, because I have tested this and this still allows us to boost. And we've also got the standard 3D sensors, because the D-rated items are the ones that are the lightest out of all of them. Onto the utility mounts, we've basically just got two heatsink launchers on the top, because you don't really need any more than this. Onto the hard points, we don't have any, because this is a science vessel. And in fact, we've only got two small hard points, so they're pretty much pointless. So now that we've upgraded our jump range, what we're going to go and do is we're going to go and see just how far we can go and push this ship for jump range. So first of all, as always, we need to go and stock up on fish. Jump in to the engineers, because right now we're at the dweller's place, and he is on this beta, the one that has all the engineering blueprints, all to grade 5, and he works for fish. So this is awesome. What we want to go and do is we're going to start off with the frameshift drive. I'm not going to bother with the engines yet because every engine upgrade that I've seen adds mass. So what we're going to go and do is we're just going to go and work on the frameshift drive to begin with. And it's funny to see that the dweller has gone and had a bit of a makeover since the commander creator has been made. But what we want is we want increased frameshift drive range. So let's go and preview the outcome. Let's go and see the very best that we're going to see what we can get the best of. Because ideally, we want to go and see if we can get this roll to max and then get a secondary effect that goes over. Now, this is certainly not ideal. Mass is going up. Again, that's not ideal. Integrity is going up. That's fine. But is that it? That is. And that is not great. That's 37. We want to get as close to 50 or over as possible. So I'm going to go and roll this a few more times. And there we go. We've gone and gotten one with an optimized mass of 52%. Because as you can see, it looks like we got 48% on the general roll and an optimized mass increase of 4%. So that's taken us over the maximum. So that's awesome. The downside to this is it's increased the mass by f the absolute worst it could be, which is 45%. But that's not terrible. We could go and roll a few more times on it, but I'm not too worried about it now. So we're going to go and apply this one. And that's taken us up from 27.19 to 38.7 light years. So that's awesome. We've gone and gotten a massive, massive increase to our jump range. So that's over 10 light years. So what we're going to go and do now is we're going to go and work on everything else. So sensors, I do believe, even though you can't see them here, this one down the bottom is mass reduction. So this is going to be a great one to have. So again, let's go and preview. And bearing in mind, the jump range that we saw over there is whilst we have cargo. So that's not bad either. The actual jump range is going to be more than that. Now let's hope that we get a mass reduction on the second. Oh, we got a mass increase. That's not perfect. But that's pretty close to top. But I am going to go and roll this a few more times, see if I can get as close to 80% as possible. Okay, this was the very next roll. We've also got a negative power draw, which is going to be very nice. Integrity up and the mass. So we did get 80%, but we got an increase of 1% mass. So that's awesome. So I'm going to apply that one. And that has taken our jump range to 39 light years. So that's awesome as well. Life support. We're also going to go and roll this for lightweight. So here we go. Class 4 lightweight. I think that's the most you can go for. So again, we're going to go and preview this. We've currently got nine more rolls. And there we go. That is pretty much maxed. Uh, sorry, I did go and just click that, so we skipped all the animations, but it's perfectly fine. We did really well there. We got a secondary effect for mass reduction, but this is taking it very close to the absolute max. So let's apply. That itself has taken us over 40 light years, so that is awesome. Next, we're going to go and look at the heatsink launchers. Because these we can also go in lightweight, and these can go up to 80% lighter as well. So let's go and preview these. We've got eight rolls left. So clicking, just to skip this out, 75%. I'm actually going to go and roll these a few more times to see how much higher we can get it. And there we go. We've actually got one that is over the maximum. So that's 81%. And we've even got a power draw reduction. So again, I'm going to go and apply that. That is awesome. And then we're going to go and roll on the second one and see just how well we can go and get that one to appear as well. So four more rolls. Hopefully we're going to get something very similar to the last one. And we do almost exactly, actually, that's almost exactly the same. 
apart from we got an integrity increase and rather than a power door draw reduction. So applying that one as well. And that has taken our current jump range with a couple of tons of cargo to 41.34 light years. Well, the question is, what else can we go and do? We could go and swap out the surface scanners. Again, these are currently not labeled here, but this is just a bug on the beta server. This one is an increase to the scan range, so we could start scanning things from a greater distance, potentially three times further away, because this adds now either an extra 100%, which would be double the range, or 200%, which would be triple the range. So that's awesome. The only downside is, is it has a massive mass reduction, uh, mass increase even of 100 to 200%, so you can make it up to three times heavier, so that's not ideal. The next one here is angle. So we can scan things more off to the sides, but again, it's another mass increase. And the last one down here is the one that I would really be interested in, is the scan rate multiplier, but again, this has the same mass increase. So I'm not really sure if I want to take these. I mean, I could because I'm not sure how heavy these particular modules are. Well, the module itself is only two tons. I mean, if we sold it, we'd only increase the jump range by less than a light year. So it's about 0 0.4, 0 0.39 of a light year, maybe? So what I'm thinking is we might actually go and try rolling for this and just see how it affects us. I mean, right now we've got 38... 0.97 light years of jump range. That's only because I've gone and filled us up again with some more fish. So our jump range is still over 40 light years. But let's go and actually roll on this and just go and see how well it goes. So let's go and preview and generate. I'm actually not going to skip this one. So let's go and see what the first one of this would be. It's not terrible. 72% faster. Let's see what the sec no secondary no secondary effects at all. That's kind of interesting. Hmm. But you know what? I'm actually going to go and try this again a couple of times and see if we can get it up to max. Well, this one isn't bad. It's at 72% here, but down here we've only gone up by 150%. Because by and by we should really be a lot further up on this one. So I'm actually going to go and apply this one and just go and see how this affects us. Because currently, with our current mass and the amount of cargo we got on, vault, on board, We've got 40.21 light years. So let's go and apply this one. So 40.21, that's taken it to 39.86. So that's reduced our jump range by about 0.4-ish light years, around about there. Now, what else could we go and do? Now, I know we can go and roll on the shield generators. Because, where is it? Enhance low power shields. This does actually go and reduce the mass. And I have tested this. What happens, because normally if you have the smaller shields on your ship and you go and roll this one, it generally goes and makes it so that those shields no longer cover your ship's hull mass. That doesn't happen with this ship. So that is awesome. So what we're going to go and do is we are going to go and roll a couple of times on this one. And go and see just what we can get. Because what we want is the mass reduction. I don't really care about the rest of this. There is not great. We're going to go and try a few more times. See if we can max out the mass reduction. Here we go. We've gone and gotten one that is 37% reduced mass. We've also got a regenerate increase and a power draw decrease. So that's nice. So the power draw has gone way down. The mass has gone down. The optimal strength has gone up, so our shields are a little bit stronger. The only thing is, is the integrity has gone down and the, whole ma uh, the optimal whole mass has gone down. But this isn't so much of a problem. So let's go and apply this. And let's go and... Because I think that's everything we can really go and do. We can, we can go to the power plant. But the question is, first of all, how are we doing for power? We're currently on 84% power. So you know what we can do? We could even go into the power plant. Uh, where are we? Low emissions power plant. We could even go and roll on this one and see if we can get a mass reduction. Because what I'm thinking is if we roll on the grade one, yes, we're going to be losing power capacity, but that's not a problem. But we also get a chance of actually having a reduction to the mass rather than increase because of secondary effects, because the, set, the primary effects are only between 4 and 0%. And it will be 
a little bit more helpful with our jump range. So I'm actually going to go and fill up with some more fish. I'm going to go roll on this one a few times. Because you see, here we go. Third roll. And we've got a 20% reduction to heat efficiency. Well, well, a 20% increase to heat efficiency. So we generate less heat. So that's awesome. Power pack capacity has gone down by a single 1%. And we've got a 5% mass decrease. So that's awesome. So let's go and apply that one. Now, don't worry, that's fine. That happens every time you modify the power plant. You see, everything's coming back online now. And as you can see, we've got 86% of our maximum power. And that's going to be even better when we go and put in the auto field maintenance unit. So let's actually go and do that now and go and see just how well we've got this ship to perform. And here we go. I got installed our ever so lovely auto field maintenance unit. Now this is a 4A. It's got a good amount of ammunition in here. Ammunition capacity is 5,400. It's not ideal for really long range trips, but it's not bad, especially if you go and collect yourself enough resources down on planets, materials to go and synthesize more refills for this, because it's one of the things that you can do. So that's a great way of extending these auto field maintenance units out beyond their normal limits. But it is always good to go and get the best that you can afford because every time you refill them, it'll refill them up to their maximum capacity so you'll get more use out of all your materials. Because it costs the same amount of materials to refill 1,000 ammo capacity as a 5,400 capacity. So, food for thought there. Now, as always, we could go and sell off the luxury cabin if you're not interested in taking passengers. So, to do that would go and increase our jump range from 41.8 light years to 46.16 light years. Blooming heck, this ship is a beast. So there we go, that's that. 46 light years jump range on the Dolphin right now. We could also go and sell the planetary vehicle hangar if you're not interested in flying, driving around on planets even. Selling that would take you up to... 47.65 light years. I'm going to keep it in though because I do like this. And also I am actually going to go and put back the passenger cabin because I like having these here. I like having the flexibility to do things. Ooh, that was an interesting sound. So that's awesome. Now obviously we could go and remove the modification off of here. I mean, let's go and see what happened, would happen if we did. Yes, permanently remove it. That's taking us up to 42.2 light years, all but the kicking and screaming. So that's really not bad. I mean, it really depends whether or not you want to go and have a faster scan time for the individual planets. It's really up to you. Whether you think that, I don't know, about half a light year, one light year's worth of jump range is really worth it to you. But either way, with all of these modifications and with the much smaller thrusters, we want to go and see just how well this thing actually goes and handles out in the void itself. So let's go and see just how well we can go and undock from here and just see how well this handles. Now bear in mind we are in gravity of 0.6 Gs and we have got a landing gear in. But this doesn't seem too bad. In fact, there we are. We're actually reaching escape velocity quite well. We're already out of mass lock. Hello, Commander. But let's go and get out into zero gravity and go and see just how well we can go and get this. Now, we do have somebody following us and mass locking us, so this is going to take a while. Thank you very much for this, Cody Worlds. <laughs> okay, and here we are. Now, let's go and see. Now, obviously, we're going a little bit too quick. Let's turn into optimal turning. And I can quite easily say that the ship doesn't turn that slowly, even with the 4D thrusters. So that's really not bad. It has a really good feel to it. The question is, though, what is our top speed right now? So about 260 meters per second, top speed. Boost speed... 350 something and look who's come and followed us you really want to be on youtube don't you matey so yeah that's not bad at all and with the jump range of over 42 light years this is really really not bad for this little ship 
I mean, I'm completely surprised with how far we've managed to push this little thing. What do you guys think of how we've got this set out? I mean, I know when I've got a modified ship, you will expect me to push it out for combat, but we might do that next time. But I really wanted to go and see just how well we could actually outfit this ship with the engineers for exploration. And let's be honest, not all of the roles that we've had have been the absolute best. I mean, we could have spent a lot more time in there pushing it out even further. And yes, I know, commanders, the thrusters on the back are not mirrored. In fact, they are just copy-pasted out of the side. I don't know if that's a bug or not. It looks like it should be. Hopefully that'll be fixed in the future, because I know that's triggering a lot of your guys' OCD. But anyway, let me know down in the comments what you think of having this as an exploration ship, especially after it's been modified for the, by the engineers to this extent. I mean, I am completely shocked of how good a ship this has actually turned out to be. As always, let me know down in the comments what you think, and I'll do my level best to get back to as many of you as I can. But anyway, that's going to be enough for this video. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Like the video if you've liked it. Dislike it if you didn't. I've been Commander Chaos Wolf from Sci-Fi Gaming. You guys, as always, have been epic. I will see you soon. And until next time, my fellow explorers, keep flying and stay shiny.